Hello everybody! Spring has sprung. Gorgeous scallops, lovely baby herbs. Rhubarb is now in all the states where it's supposed to be growing. It is out of the ground and we are enjoying local rhubarb even in southern Minnesota. I am Andrew Zimmern. Welcome to our Instagram live presentation, AZ Cooks, brought to you by the good folks at Florida Kanya Rum and our friends at Shun Cutlery. I am so excited about this recipe. This is one of these recipes that internally in the office we argue a lot about. Is this the kind of thing that people at home are interested in seeing? Are we going to have enough culinary literacy to talk to you about? Uh, can we get you excited about doing a homestyle version of this course? And for those of you that work in restaurants or try to replicate restaurant quality, uh, Michelin star worthy cuisine in your home? Can you do a version of this? The answer is resounding yes to all of that. Uh, and we are going to uh, get down to business in just a minute. I have just a couple of announcements, things I think you're fine are really fun because today with the rhubarb, with the fennel, with the, the last of the pomegranates of the year, with all of those baby, baby herbs, we have tiny little mint tops and basil tops and cilantro, flowering cilantro sprigs and the fronds from the fennel and the scallops, we are making an agua chili which means hot water, spicy water uh, in Spanish. Uh, so it is a version of a ceviche or a seafood cocktail. It, you can call it a lot of different things, but it is specifically an agua chile, and uh, it's my favorite way uh, to eat seafood on a warm spring night like this one. Let's celebrate the bounty of the season. As I said, a couple of announcements. Uh, not sure if any of you know what this is, this is one of the best cured sausages uh, made in the world. It is from Arthur Avenue in the Bronx in New York City from one of the greatest producers of cured meats uh, the world over, the Calabrian Pork Store. Um, they have finally started flying sausages around the country. So no matter where you live or where you're watching, you can now order these incredible sausages from the Calabrian Pork Store for those of you that, uh, well, we featured it in the Bronx uh, episode of the Zimmern List, in the Bronx episode of Bizarre Foods, uh, in a bunch of TV ads that I've done. I'm obsessed with this place. It's the one that has all the sausages hanging from the ceiling. It is the, it, well, I just love it. And it, look at those big pieces of cured fat and it's soft. It's not a dry sausage. I love it. Anyway, Is they're it now. Chorizo? What? Is it chorizo? It, do you want to know something interesting? Uh, when JP tasted it, I gave him a slice, and he said the the spiciness of it and the natural fermentation that they put on it reminds him of a really good Spanish chorizo. Vicky, pronounce it properly. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, second thing, I have a bunch of friends who who had book drops uh, this week. Um, I, <laughs> Ellen Bennett, one of my close dear friends, uh, one of my homies, one of my co-pilots, uh, a woman for whom I have an unending amount of love and adoration, her first book, which is just absolutely fantastic, Dream First, Details Later, uh, probably the best business book that I've read uh, in years. Business books do not have to be black and white. They can be very colorful, just like Ellen. Uh, she is the founder of the company Headley Bennett. Um, she's an incredible, incredible entrepreneur. She is a driving force, extremely creative, someone I like to talk my projects through with. And this Headley Bennett apron is with the little lightning bolts on it, is in celebration of Dream First Details Later. You want to get that book, check it out. I posted about it earlier on my Instagram. Uh, my friend Gregory Gourdet, I have done a ton of projects with this guy. Again, uh, Gregory has been in some of my TV shows most recently. Uh, he's a chef in Portland. Uh, most recently, he was on our MSNBC show, What's Eating America? The Addiction episode. He's one of my sober brothers. We have cooked together. We have gone to meetings together. We have shared life together. 
I have an unending amount of respect for this dude, not just in the kitchen, but for what he does outside of the kitchen. Um, and he has been working for three years on this book, Everyone's Table, super healthy, delicious food from a Portland-based chef who really knows what he's doing. So please go check that out. By the way, created with JJ Good, who has co-created a whole bunch of books uh, of friends of mine. So shout out to JJ as well. And then uh, at, I think, seven o'clock uh, central time, uh, or maybe at six o'clock cent o'clock central time, I just tweeted about it. So go check it out on my Twitter when you're done with this. I am doing a fireside chat with Farmer Lee Jones, uh, who runs the Chef's Garden in Huron, Ohio. Again, another veteran of three or four episodes of my TV over the years, my friend of 20 years, and the person who sells vegetables to all the best chefs in the country. Uh, we are gonna be doing an incredible job. The Chef's Garden uh, is uh, his new book, Everything You Need to Know About Vegetables with an incredible foreword by my buddy Jose Andres. So uh, a great time to be celebrating food and food business with those three. Uh, let's get started with our presentation. First things first. Um, I have some pomegranate juice. Um, you can take that out of a juicer. You can buy pomegranate juice. I'm just gonna set that aside and I'm going to turn this ice bowl into an ice bath by adding some water. Now, you can curl little pieces of rhubarb by hitting them with a peeler and sticking them in the ice water. You can cut the rhubarb and very carefully going at a bit of an angle, making sure not to cut my fingers. Take a couple of slices of the rhubarb and put that in there. Rhubarb is very stringy. So if you get this, but it's the thickness that's okay with you, by all means, just cut the end, drop those in the, oh God, the smell of this is just incredible. Fresh and glorious rhubarb. Um, if you have big knife skills, take a piece away so it's nice and flat and just slowly draw your knife down there. All the way, one motion, right? And just poke those into the ice, they'll curl up. Just all the way, one push, one push. Stick them into the ice. One push, stick it into the ice. Do not worry about little bits of rhubarb. You can saute it with brown butter and sugar and spoon it over ice cream. You can do so many things with this. And I'm gonna make a fresh cut and cut the sides off and show you how we kind of do this restaurant style. You want a piece that is a little more geometric. And if you notice what I'm doing by just, whoops, by just putting these slices into the ice water, I can get them to curl. Next thing that you can do with them is again, go back to what we were doing before. Draw curls the same length. Right? Then take those pieces. I'm gonna put those with the other ones and just bury them in the ice. They will get nice and crispy. You can cut the ends with a scissor. You can give pieces of rhubarb like this and dump it into sugar. Let the kids, that's how I eat it ate it, eat it as a little child. My mom, we would go to the rhubarb patch and pull out a stick and dunk it into sugar. 
I love the tart, crisp snap of a rhubarb curl with a bunch of sweet and sour flavors. Some of these are bundling together and I want them to curl up. But you can even see in just a short amount of time, just these ones are starting to curl ever so slightly to make fun chips. So we're just gonna set that aside. We'll take those out when we are good and ready. Now, you don't want any, the rhubarb's very sour, so you're gonna have a lot of acidity on your board. We don't wanna decompose any of our other ingredients. Next thing that we wanna do is we wanna make our chili mixture. And this starts with the tart pomegranate juice. I'm going to add some honey. You can add, some people like sugar. I just happen to, with pomegranate and rhubarb, um, I just love the flavor of honey with that. So I'm just gonna swoop that in there. And because it's cold, we have to really do a nice job whisking that to sweeten that pomegranate juice. What are you making, Andrew? I am making a scallop agua chile. We are celebrating spring with gorgeous diver scallops, the last pomegranates of the year, and all of these spring vegetables and herbs, especially my favorite to serve with scallop, raw scallop of any kind, scallop crudo, scallop ceviche, anything scallop which is rhubarb because it's got such a wonderful tart flavor to it. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna add a little olive oil and I'm gonna allow it to be broken. We're gonna spoon this in and we're gonna get those beautiful puddles of olive oil in there. Um, I'm gonna make a little zest. Some lemon. Website? Recipes are always on the web website at andrewzimmern.com. I'm gonna make a little pile there. We've got some lemon zest, some lime zest, and some orange zest. And I'm going to do these in little strips and just stick them on my board. I'm not gonna use much of it. I just wanna strip the zest off before I cut and juice these citrus fruits. Again, the last yummy navel oranges of the season. We're just gonna stick those together, let them stay nice and dry on the board. We don't have to worry about them drying out. A little bit of dryness actually does them good. And we're gonna put this dish together in like four or five minutes. So I'm adding that orange juice, which gives some tartness and some sweetness. A little bit of tartness from the lemon. What about the seeds? They will not go in there. And I don't think I saw one drop in. These limes are dry, but that's all right. Just add a little bit of that. We're not making ceviche. We are not curing these with citrus, right? We're just using the citrus and the honey and the olive oil and the pomegranate juice and the orange juice to make one big, beautiful liquid flavor broth bomb. That is so delicious. So, agua chile. Here's the spicy part. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully with the tip of my knife, take the center of this seed pod out. I'm gonna draw my knife down because I don't want any of those ribs in there nor any seed. I wanna make sure my knife is super sharp because I want lots of thin threads of this Fresno chili, which is neither too spicy nor too uh, mild. It's just right. I love how big and curved these are. Let's...
I think that should do it for us for the chili. Put this aside. I'm just going to assemble these ingredients on my board. Herbs, all those are done. These pieces of rhubarb have curled up beautifully. We'll leave those there in that ice bath. Cucumber. Serrano. Let's throw a little serrano in there. Let's get a little extra heat. Uh, serrano chilies I eat with the seeds. The seeds are very citrusy. I actually like the seed pod in a serrano. And serranos, for those of you who have watched me cook for a while, you know how much I love them because of that. You don't have to worry about the seed pod. Um, I'm actually going to take a smaller piece of cucumber. I'm going to want to do, what is that, about two inches in length? And I'm just going to make a couple of passes there with my mandolin. You can do this with anything. It works great with shrimp. It works great. You know, if you have cooked seafood, like leftover crab or something, you can do an agua chili. It's great with oysters or clams. Um, I'm going to do cucumber two ways. Let's give ourselves some alumettes. What brand of knife is that? This is a shun, of course. Just some matchsticks. And then I'm gonna take these and cut them a little thicker, maybe a quarter of an inch, and make a little bit of brunoise with them. Just turn them the other way and make little squares. I just want all of the snap, crackle, and pop of the cucumber. Not just that wonderful cucumber flavor that's so delicious with seafood, but I want those little bits of crunchy as well. And then last but not least, my fennel bulb. I love fennel. Let's cut that little root end off. And with the fennel, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with some of these other goodies. I'm just going to make some thin slices on an angle just so that I have some little crispy bits that are sort of rooted on the same side, held by that root end that allow me to create some fun shapes and stand them up between the scallops, right? So I've got everything kind of assembled that I want to. Oh, salt, nice sea salt, and crushed black pepper that I've toasted and then put into my mortar and pestle so that I get it super aromatic because I'm just gonna put a little bit on top of the scallop. I love black pepper with rhubarb and these citrus fruits. Right? So, if I am serving this for guests in my house, let's give them three pieces. Let's season them ever so slightly, right? Let's stick, let's just start piling this on some of the green chilies. I can do this ahead of time and set them up in bowls or have the cut vegetables ready to go in bowls. You are asking if they're raw. They are raw, of course they are. The, one of the best ways to enjoy a sea scallop. I'm just gonna put some fennel there and I know this looks really fancy, but it's, it's just assemblage, right? It's just assemblage. I'm going to put a couple of the pomegranates there, a little chive on top of that, and maybe some of these little pieces of rhubarb around there. 
You see I'm operating with threes. And then I'm gonna take some of this other rhubarb. Are raw scallops safe to eat? Well, of course they are. Why wouldn't they be? Super, super fresh right out of the ocean. Anything fresh right out of the ocean is safe to eat. And that's why I love these hand-collected diver scallops. I'm actually gonna just sprinkle a little bit more rhubarb in there because the star of this dish is going to be this wonderful sauce. Let me just do this over here. And just come at this from the side. And all I wanna do is fill up the bottom there. Now, that's a pretty easy, just hodgepodge way uh, to do this at home, right? Um, what if we wanted to do something maybe a little fancier? Pour a little bit of our seasoned juice in there. We've still got the olive oil. Maybe some cucumber. Chilies. Let's do the reverse of what we did in there. A little bit of orange zest, a little bit of lime zest. We'll clean up the rim of that plate when we're done. A little bit of lemon zest. Let's take a little bit of that. Throw some on top and some in the broth there. Few more of those cucumbers so you crunch down on all of that cucumber. Instead of using the little pieces that are stuck to the root, let's use some of the shaved fennel. And slowly but surely, I'm building a little salad that's gonna raise the scallops up out of that liquid. Let's take a few of these. Could you add any of your seasonings to the scallops or to Too the Too strong. Fish? Too strong, don't want to. Here, I'm just gonna slice these and lay them on top. Let's see, oh, here's a beautiful round. I'm just drawing my knife from one end to the tip, making a really, let's reverse how we set those up. Okay, same ingredients, right? Except this time, let's just use those curls. Just fun things to do as we play with our food in a good way, right? Now with this one, let's throw some herbs on top. Let's take, this is a little bit of mint. This is, let's find some basil. Oh, that's more mint, I know, it, I know you're in here. There we go. Some Thai basil. Little tops of that. Uh, my favorite. Some little flowering coriander. Whoops. Just tuck some flowering coriander in there. I've got another piece. Is this like super precious? Sure. Does it eat in a really stunning way? You bet your bippy it does. What's a bippy? A bippy. Did you ever see laughing when you were a kid yeah. in the 60s? I'm not a little Maybe a little chive, just so we get a little bit of that 
slightly sulfuric quality that all the alums have together. Now, let's just take any fingerprints and stuff off there. And there you have something that I would serve in a restaurant. Here you have something a little more rustic, same ingredients that I would serve in my home. The idea is, if you don't have a couple of these ingredients, if you don't have cucumber and you have fennel, no big deal. If you don't have fennel, but you got cucumber, no big deal. If you don't have micro herbs, no problem. Just use some chive and some zest. What you want to make sure that you do is you combine the textures, the flavors in contrast, and you supply those to the plate. Scallops are soft and saline, so I want something cold and sweet and tart with it. I want something crunchy with it. I have sweet, I have sour, I have spicy, right? The more contrasts that you can put into those bowls, the better. This is something that I would serve guests in my house with a spoon. Let them cut the scallop with the spoon and slurp up that sauce. Uh, this uh, also, with a spoon, right? But maybe I'd put a fork and knife down there as well. Here's the, here's the key to this, right? I know that many of you out there look at this and go, wow, this is way too fussy. This just looks fussy. This actually is fussy. But some of you will do this on a Tuesday or Thursday night for your family or just you and a loved one. Uh, and you'll do this on Saturday night when you wanna do steaks on the grill. What a great way to highlight shrimp, oyster, scallop, crab, expensive seafood, just by taking an ounce or two and making an agua chile, right? Spicy water out of that. Because when you take this, this juice with the olive oil and all those seasonings, and you let that chili soak in there for the 25, 30, 45 seconds it takes to get there. What you do as those acids from the chili go out in there is you create a spicy water. So good with scallop, I can't even begin to tell you. All right, questions, comments, support, deny, refute. What do you got? Who's mad at me? Bring it. They want you to eat it. They want me to eat it, it's so beautiful. The combination of textures is just unreal. I want to make sure I get a little bit of everything in that first bite. Mm. Wow. 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 And wow. Um, all right. Don't trust me. Vicky the Spanish, take a bite. Because she hates my food and she also has no idea what this is. Is it really spicy? No! Okay. Just taste it. What do you mean, is it really spicy? Uh-oh, I wish it would have got better on camera. What do you think? Mm. Really good. Really good. Now, mm -hmm. sweet, sour, not too spicy. No, not spicy at all. Scallop, super clean, super. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. And you only have, from a glycemic level, you only have a tablespoon of honey in all of this right here, which can be repurposed. You take all of your rhubarb ends and you put it in to the juice there and save it for tomorrow's breakfast. Put it over yogurt with some nuts and some muesli or whatever it is that you do, other fruit. Fantastic. Really gonna be a home run. And your family is gonna love it. I know it sounds nuts, the person in my house who asked for this dish the most is my kid. Because once he tasted it and was like, whoa, that scallop, it, uh, scallops like salmon actually get a little fishier, if there's a, such a word, when you cook them. That scallop, when it's in its, in its raw state, is about as delicious and unfishy as food gets. Yeah, it's not fishy at all. Yeah, so nobody Nobody dislikes my food more than Dusty. We have a guest. We have we have a guest eater. That isn't true. So you tell you just take a bite and just be honest. Okay. Well, You're a bite. typical average American mother of two, homemaker. There's nothing typical about me. Mmm, that's really good. 
That's so good. Does this sauce change the texture of the scallops? No. Mm -hmm. Unlike ceviche, and it's a great question. Oh my gosh. Uh, ceviche actually cooks through the acidity. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is it, it, is it slightly toughens the food, just the same way that the difference between raw, the, the way that, that flame heat firms up the food, right? Toughens is probably the wrong word. With the scallop, there's no change. I mean, look, if you left it in there for two days, sure, ultimately the little bit of orange and lemon, other acid uh, in there. But look at how beautiful that is. Anyway, Delicious. what else you got for questions? Where can we buy your spices? Oh, you know, a lot of people have asked about this. Uh, ShopRite and Walmart carry it now. Or you can go to BadiaSpices.com and just uh, punch it into the search. It should come right up. Price right also. Price right. Oh, really? We added another store. Nice. Mazel tov. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. Are there going to be any more family dinner episodes? Well, you know, here's what's happening. We made 20 of them or so. Um, Magnolia uh, dropped six onto Discovery Plus to test it out. In July, a whole bunch more are going on to the new Magnolia app and Discovery Plus. And then in January, a whole bunch more are gonna go down on the uh, relaunch of DIY, the linear channel, which will be renamed Magnolia. To be able to see them in all kinds of places. And yes, uh, there are more, and yes, we have plans to make more. Is there a spice? And thank you, by the way, to the fans, because it's it's your viewership of those, uh, of Family Dinner, and of my other content that's on Discovery Plus that has made Family Dinner so successful, and it's a big fat hit, so thank you. Is there any spice and seasoning that doesn't go well with fish at all? Any spicy seasoning? Spice or seasoning. Spice or seasoning. Well. That you can't use with fish. Yeah, lots. Here, here's the rule of thumb. It's like wine drinking. You want to choose a wine whose flavor is appropriate to the level of flavor in the food. So you don't want to take like filet of sole or lake perch, you know, something that's like super white, super unfatty, super unfishy, super mild, super delicate, and put Szechuan chili oil on it, right? Because all you're gonna taste, taste is the Szechuan chili oil. I don't like to fry those fish a lot because all you taste is the, the batter or breading and the frying oil. I want to serve those foods just sauteed with just a little bit of brown butter, salt, and just a hint of lemon, right? Um, so make sure what you're pairing with your food is not overwhelming it. So here's a great example. Catfish is a very mild, flaky white fish. Um, and in Southeast Asia, they pair it with an herb salad, right? With uh, basil and cilantro and mint in it. And they don't overwhelm it with lots of flavor. They have those subtle leafy herbs to complement the flavor of the fish, whether it's sauteed, grilled, broiled, however. Um, Vicky's looking for questions. What other recipes can I use rhubarb in? Oh my gosh. We have a ton on our website. Crumbles, jams, jellies, all kinds of desserts. But what I really am trying to show you, and thank you, great question. All of this stuff, you can make tons of rhubarb curls and throw it into a salad. Just remember, rhubarb is tart. Repeat after me, rhubarb is tart. Rhubarb so you wanna tart. serve it, thank you, Vicki. You wanna serve it with, <laughs> with something that is sweet. So if I am using rhubarb in a salad, and let's say I'm taking a whole stalk and slicing it up in a salad, I wanna make sure I, I put it with sturdy greens and like a brown sugar vinaigrette, right? Something that's a little sweeter or a honey ginger vinaigrette so that I'm not overwhelmed. Now, look, rhubarb is not vinegar, okay? So when I say it's tart, it's not like it's puckering up my mouth, especially thinly sliced, like oh, it's so good. Rhubarb has such a singular flavor, but probably the most common way that we 
serve it in my house. Dice it up, sugar, cornstarch, a little squeeze of lemon juice, toss, 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 bottom of the baking dish, crumble on top, bake it in the oven. I think that brings out all the specialness in the rhubarb. I just love rhubarb so much. There's so many fun ways to do this. It's remarkable. If you cook peppers in oil, then can you use that same oil to cook fish? Yes. Where's your apron from? Mm. You missed the beginning. This is the newest release from Headley Bennett, my friend Ellen Bennett's company, in celebration of her new book, Dream First, Details Later, a great business book for entrepreneurs about elevating your ideas and getting to go faster. You gotta get to go faster. Um, I took Ellen, invited her many years ago to join me at Babson College uh, where I teach uh, food entrepreneurship at the Lewis Institute. And Ellen was like a raindrop entering the river because they had codified the way she had been working for a long time, which is just do it now, then figure out the details later. The whole Babson model is open up your business, then write the business plan. Because until you open the doors and see what customers want, it's all just guessing, right? Now, yes, I'm oversimplifying to make a point, but if you're an entrepreneur, fire the gun now, then catch up to the bullet. Uh, dreaming of France lately. Any recommendations for French cuisine? Dreaming of France? Oh my gosh. Uh, right now, it's, I mean, it's spring in America. The first thing that comes to my mind, my mind is Provence uh, and the flavors, uh, well, we call it the cuisine of the sun, right? Um, the, the, the entire Provençal uh, region of France, famous for things like uh, ratatouille, right, uh, is a place that you want to be eating from. So check out Cuisines of Provence anywhere. There are wonderful cookbooks that are written about it. Now is the time of year that I like making a, a bouillabaisse and, and you know I just start getting away from winter and into spring and Provençal food does that beautifully. Think tomatoes, olive oil, garlic, chickpeas, all those wonderful things that come out of Provence that we love so much. The Potash twins are watching. They say, hi, Dad. Oh, my boys. I love that. They're just lounging around the swimming pool at their huge mansion in Palm Springs, having their servants light their cigars, giving them a manicure before they roll into town at night and they're matching red and blue Lambos and do drag racing and try not to get caught by the local authorities. <laughs> Someone keeps asking about wild turkey. Not the drink, but the... Oh, what a fantastic time of year. By the way, if you are a hunter, if you are looking for great recipes for wild turkey, uh, just remember, it's really, really important. With wild turkeys, the meat is very lean. I take the legs and the thighs and I poach them at 200 degrees. You can do it in olive oil. You can do it in animal fat like duck fat or lard. After you've cured them in sugar and salt and herbs, just uh, it just think confit. Substitute, look up a, a good duck confit recipe. We have them on our website and do the legs and thighs that way or braise the legs and thighs uh, like you were doing a pot pie. The white meat, I cut it into strips, flour, egg, breadcrumb and fry it or brine it and grill it. Do not overcook your turkey. Let it cook it to medium rare and let it rest. And you will, be, you will thank me for that. The other thing I do with spring turkey, because I think it's the easiest, you take the breast, you slice it into thin scallops, escalope in French, right? But thin slices, rub it with olive oil and herbs, just touch it on a hot grill, 60 seconds aside and then stack all those slices and then serve that with a bread a panzanella tomato bread salad on top we have recipes for that on our website at andrewzimmern.com someone earlier said that they really enjoyed last night's live oh fantastic we celebrated uh, food waste awareness day international food waste awareness day thanks to the good folks at alda usa in support of uh at feeding america it was a fantastic evening. We learned a lot. We have more stuff being posted tomorrow if you missed it. Lots of tips, lots of cool things. Alda USA is gonna circulate a bunch of stuff. Really important, seven tips how you 
can eradicate waste in your lives. And what's your favorite type of bread? My favorite type of bread? I'm not doing carbs anymore, man. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I really like full flavored uh, turned breads. I love sourdough. Um, my, my current favorite bread is right here in Minneapolis, served at Spoon and Stable. They're, that, that rye sourdough that they do is absolutely mm. out of control. Minnesota Heritage Grain, it, it's got, it's crusty, soft on the inside. It's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely stellar. Um, look, the, the weather in Minnesota is going to be perfect this weekend. Uh, so if you're like me, get out and play a couple rounds of disc golf, walk the dog. If, oh, hey, um, if you are not subscribing to my new favorite Instagram feed, at Luca the Legato, if you go into my IG bio, uh, his, uh, Instagram handle is right there. That's my cute little Legato Romagnolo, a great, great dog. Um, he has his own Instagram page. It's blowing up. Now we're putting a lot of fun stuff on there. We've got some more stuff to put on there this weekend. Get out and make this dish. Even if you do this with leftover grilled seafood, oh, you don't, you don't yeah, focus on the eat one, focus on this pretty beautiful one, right? Scallop mm. agua chile with a fantastic fantastic liquid sauce that's made with olive oil, chilies, lemon, lime, and orange juice, and pomegranate juice, which supplies that stunning, stunning uh, purple color. Uh, please try this at home. I think you're going to love it. Uh, next week, more food, more of your questions, and I will reveal the three secrets I've never told anybody. <laughs> Tune in.